All right, so it's a little bit louder up here than I thought. I got to use this as a second mic. So basically, thoughts for the channel. This year, what I'm going to be focusing on is basically recording all the stuff that I would like to document. Right now, I'm kind of stepping away from doing all types of kind of video production work, only keeping a few clients that, that I've worked with for a, a while now. But I think this year on YouTube, what I want to do kind of just create the stuff that I would like to share. As of right now, that includes, I'm gonna be putting out more fixed gear content, obviously. Gotta break in that new frame that got sent over by Master. Basically walking you through job shadows, if there are any that, that come up. Right now I'm really getting into the FPV stuff, so I think I'm gonna be covering a lot of that on this channel, so look out for some more FPV content. I wanna be able to put projects together with the FPV drone and kind of focus on that. I think that's what I'm going to be streamlining this year is more drone work than anything else. Uh, I think where I'm gonna be using my camera more is gonna be like for this YouTube vlog stuff. Also, I don't want to forget about any videos that I worked on in the past. I still have yet to put out the full Iron Man video, which is going to be coming up. I've been editing that one. That's going to be on the way. I told you the whole timeline has been shifted already, but it's a year or two now since Qatar, but I do want to put out that video. Ironman was a thing that I set out to do from the beginning of the year, so that meant running a half marathon at the beginning of the year. After that, with work, I was able to go to Japan, went with my homie Alfonso. We were working in Japan, got to meet so many amazing people out there, showed us around, got to put together some art projects, ate some really good food in the meantime, went sightseeing a little bit, but mainly it was a work trip. It was a very different change of pace. Got to meet up with Satoshi while I was out there. That was the first time meeting. If you follow me on Instagram, you might know Satoshi. I was able to meet him out there while I was traveling out there for work. I'm actually wearing the same jacket that I am now, which is a coincidence. I didn't plan this out. From there, came back right off the plane, basically that same week, hopped into the LA Marathon. I signed up last minute while I was still in Japan. I knew it was something that was gonna help out with the process. I hadn't run a marathon in over like, I don't know, maybe 10 years. I think the last time I did it, I was in middle school. I was around 13 or something like that. Then I was invited onto the podcast with Dylan and Brandon. Some guys that I met while I was working as a videographer in music, they were following around other artists as well. That was awesome. Thank you guys for inviting me on there. Had a lot of fun. That was kind of a moment where I got to plan out the year and really speak it out loud into existence. I had briefly spoken about Iron Man and how I was going to do that. Even at that point, I didn't really know what I got myself into. Got to go out riding again for the first time in a long time. Went out with Marco and the boys from SMC. And of course, our first day back, he breaks his hand. This was after he had already had an injury. That kind of set back the riding, but also that year I wasn't planning on riding too much just because I was focused on Ironman, didn't want to get injured. It's a huge investment on my part. So I really wanted to make sure that I had all my grounds covered and didn't affect that in any way. Got a chance to go to NAB. This was kind of like a spontaneous trip that I had always seen other YouTubers go to and look at all the new tech that's out there. That same day, I was able to meet some of my favorite creators, got to see them in person, ask a few questions, and really just indulge myself into all the tech that's out there. It was exciting seeing how far we've come with technology and how easy it is to create stuff now. My cousin got married in Mexico, was able to enjoy some time with some family that I hadn't seen in many years. Also got to meet up with the homies that were skating in El Centro and Morelia. They were stoked that we were able to get clips. Hopefully I'm able to make it out there again this year and document more. Once I came back, it was straight back to Ironman training. After my latest big feat, I was able to do 100 miles. I was from here to Oxnard, got documented by my friend Joe. Shout out to Joe for coming along for the ride. I know it wasn't the easiest thing, but we were able to get it done with just me riding and him on the motorcycle. After that, it was more training, training, training every single day up until my trip to Canada. That was hosted by my friend Hanman. Huge shout out to you, bro. You put out an amazing event. We got, we all got the opportunity to meet up with some like-minded people, which helped me out a lot in my creative process. Seeing how normal everybody is with recording themselves and documenting their life was very reassuring and refreshing for me. So 
big thank you to you. I was able to get in like a training session here and there, but mostly was able to focus on the content that we wanted to get. And he just hosted another one this past week in Arizona and it looked like a blast. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it out this year, but for the next one, I'll definitely be there. That's gonna be just another opportunity to document. I'll leave a link below so maybe you guys can follow and hopefully join us on the next one. During the summer, I definitely started swimming the most. At the beginning of the year, it wasn't something that I really was excited for. In the summer, it got a little bit easier. It wasn't as cold in the mornings, but this is when I went full force into the swimming in preparation for Ironman. One shoot that I did this year that really made me decide what I wanted to do in the filmmaking space was document people that are out there doing the same things that I am. I sent a DM to Spencer Rathcamp. He's a mountain bike rider for Specialized. I hit him up, kind of pitched him an idea, wanted to do an FPV shoot. Had so much fun on this shoot. Definitely allowed me to remember why I picked up a camera in the first place. And also you might notice that now everything that I've been recording, none of it has been in the studio. Reason being is that I got rid of the studio. I just got to the point where I didn't really feel motivated to come in there and create stuff. What I noticed myself doing was mostly editing in the space and the whole reason of getting the studio was to be able to have a location where people can come in and shoot or I can shoot this YouTube content and that wasn't getting done. It also didn't make sense because all the stuff that I want to shoot is outside and how are you going to shoot outside if you spend all your time inside a studio? So after I left the studio, it opened doors for a lot more things that were able to be done. I didn't have the overhead of renting a space anymore. It gave me a little bit more freedom and also allowed me to be outside more, which is all I really wanted from the beginning anyway. From there, I did my first swim race. Honestly, that's something that I never thought that I would do. The only reason I did it was in preparation for Ironman. And this swim race, it had been postponed for weeks. Whenever I was getting out there in the water with my swim instructor in the open ocean, I would just think how much more would I have to swim in the Ironman. This swim race definitely gave me a better perspective of what it was going to take for the swim portion of the Ironman. I ended up not finishing last, which was good. I didn't want to be the absolute last one. At this point, I couldn't afford to lose any other training sessions. Everything had to be done very strategically, make sure that I wasn't getting injured, because that's the last thing that I wanted one week before. Then came Ironman week. I think that's the moment that I knew I was officially in this. There was no more playing around. This is what I had trained all year for. This event really taught me my limits as an athlete, my limits mentally, and just literally took everything that I could. And from the beginning, this was the whole goal with this year, being able to step out of my comfort zone and really push myself to my absolute limits. Not gonna to get too deep into it because I have a full video that's coming out for that. I can definitely say that this is one of the biggest moments in my life that kind of changed things around. After Ironman, I think I kind of went through a period of not knowing what to do after that. This whole year had been about me working towards this goal and once it was completed, I kind of didn't really know what else to do. You know, like when you go on a trip and you come back and nothing is the same, you kind of wish you were still on that trip. Well, that's kind of how I felt. What helped me get out of that was my friend Satoshi coming over from Japan. He came here for the SMC fixed gear event and because he had shown me around when we were in Japan, I took it upon myself to show him around LA and really see what we're about. We spent a few days shooting and I could say it was honestly such a breath of fresh air getting out there again and filming what I love to do. After that, we had just been on a roll. We got out there, shot the promo for my friend Marco for his new frame that just dropped. I picked up the board again and me and Joe have just been out there and getting clips and having fun with it. The last trip that capped off the year was Seattle and that was a blast. <laughs> then my friend Ray Fury invited me to go location scouting for a project that he's working on with Canyon and that was a lot of fun and made me realize that in 2024 I need to take more road trips. The only thing is that next time we need to plan it out better. When we got out there it was already getting dark and we had to ride back in pitch black. Luckily when I got home I got back to a package from Master Bike Co with a brand new frame. It's something that I completely didn't expect. I got one of the new colorway frames with this latest drop. Assembled the bike as soon as I could, went out riding and getting clips just like old times. 
now that we're kind of caught up for this year what my goal is the main goal is to drop at least 52 videos this year at least one video every week for the next year that is something that i'm holding myself strongly towards and who knows i might even be able to get more videos in there right now i'm not focused too much on perfection i just want to be able to get the content out that i've been waiting to drop this whole time so you're definitely going to be seeing old videos new videos i'm just going to drop it not think about it after dropping my latest new york video i realized that this stuff just needs to be out there it doesn't matter at the end of the day it's not going to be the last project that i'm going to be doing can't be a perfectionist on it just got to make it happen and this year i'm going to make it happen regardless of the circumstances it just needs to be one of those things that i focus on and just keep on dropping and it's low-key getting a little bit easier talking on camera just because right now i'm in my david goggins mindset bro nothing is gonna stop me you gotta stay hard as he says man nobody else is gonna do it for you, you gotta do it for yourself and yeah i don't know that's pretty much it now i'm gonna go see if i can get some flight footage with this new fpv drone that i've been waiting 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 to set up finally got it up so I don't know if any of that was recorded, so I hope so. I didn't really think about how do you press start on this camera. All right, so I figured out how to start the video. I didn't have the setting set in the goggles, so now I'm gonna hopefully have some feet. to switch the arm button because this little switch is very easy to arm yourself and if you have it in your hand you might chop off your finger overall pretty cool i do want to go somewhere where i can get like some very like cinematic shots but right here on this roof it's not ideal yeah i don't want it to fall off of the roof or land on something so i need to find a, a better spot for this overall it flies really well a lot more quiet than the other one that i have i also want to see what kind of range it has so Hopefully I could try that out soon. I'm gonna just power it off before something happens to it and that's it. So yeah, let's let's get packed up. Ooh, we we're recording, so we got the first flight in there. Let's check this out. It looks really good even just out of camera. But I didn't even have the ND filters on it or anything. I just wanna completely let it loose and see what it's capable of. Right now it's a little windy up here. I don't want to push it too much because I don't want it to be the last flight that I get in. It flies way better than the Cinewoop that I'm used to flying. Still thinking about putting an actual GoPro on top. Um, the image quality is looking amazing though out of the O3 system. In the goggles feed it looks amazing too. So I'm going to mess around with the camera settings, put it in D-Log if it has that. I think it might have D-Cine like, but really excited to test it out again. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Man, I really hope that audio doesn't sound too bad. I realized that I forgot my wireless mic and I just have the shotgun one and my iPhone. So let me know if the audio sounds okay. If it doesn't, oh well. This video is still gonna be posted regardless. So yeah, that's it.